Welcome. This is Campus Comics Cast. This is the podcast for Muddy Monster Comics. Muddy Monster Comics is located at 1422 Walnut Street in Murfreesboro, Illinois. And if you want more information about that, be sure and check out our episode uh, number 100, where Mike No comes on and speaks about the the changes to the store. Um, but if you want to reach out and contact Mike, you can do that through Facebook. Uh, just send him a message through Messenger, or you can call him at 618. 618- Four five seven six zero one one, and we're going to find out it's a good thing that he kept the same phone number here in just a minute. Uh, but the store is currently open Tuesday to Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and it is once again time uh, for the previews catalog. However, before we get started on that, we need to talk about an event that is upcoming at the shop. It's going to, we're going to have the first Muddy Monster Mini Con, and this is going to be July 24th, 2021. Uh, and Muddy Monster Comics is going to be hosting Jason Font. Uh, Jason played the Red Ranger in Power Rangers Time Force and several other iterations of that series from 2001 all the way up to 2015. Uh, so if you're interested in meeting one of the Power Rangers and get something signed, then this is going to be your opportunity. Um, a couple other guests of note th- that day, uh, Brian K. Morris, who is a... a, a, a an author. Um, I was coming up with an adjective for author and just blanked out. So I just, I'm just going to say author. <laughs> um, and uh, he has a book. I just read one, uh, Skyman uh, Battles the Master of Steam, which is kind of like got a pulp, uh, the old pulp story feel to it. And then also uh, there that day is Justin Holman. And Justin is an artist that has worked for both Marvel um, and Xenoscope. So he's got some professional credits um, as an inker to his name. So there'll be some other vendors there as well. Um, But again, the primary draw is going to be Jason Font, the Red Ranger from Power Rangers Time Force. So I believe he'll probably just run uh, the Minicon during the regular uh, hours. Uh, he may actually cut the mini con off a little bit earlier, like at four o'clock. But uh, so I would say we'll say for now that it's going to be 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday, July 24th. But we'll get an event up on the Facebook page uh, pretty soon. And hopefully you can uh, follow that event and get additional details about uh, vendors and and uh, other artists, writers and artisans that will be there that day. So. All right. So you guys got anything to say about the mini con or. Um, anything else before we jump into previews? Uh, no, just to introduce ourselves, this is Mike Atchison. Oh, yeah. There's other people <laughs> on this podcast besides me. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm Chad Schubert. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you, you had, you had, you were focused. You had something That's you right. had to, you, you did. Had, you had a mission. That's way more important than, than them knowing who else <laughs> is on <right>. here. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on who you ask. So, uh, yeah, I usually put that in like in my little, I have to write myself an intro to kind of keep on track. And I forgot to put in, you know, who else? I was so focused on the mini con that I forgot about the other stuff. Yeah, this is very cool. I, as unexpected, I didn't expect for there to be a mini con so quickly. I, and I know the opportunity kind of arises and, I'm yeah. glad that uh, they jumped on it. Yeah, well, it was one of those things where the, I mentioned it was good that Mike kept the same phone number because that's how they reached out to him was yeah. on the phone, you know. So um, if he had switched numbers when he moved to Murphy, he maybe wouldn't have had this opportunity. So yeah. um, that was a good deal. So, all right. Well, while we're uh, getting ready to head to the DC catalog, uh, orders are technically due uh, April 18th, which as we record this, or it's April 18th, <laughs> May 18th. Yes. I got a typo in my uh, in my notes here. So uh, May 18th, uh, you'd have a couple of days after that. So I'm going to have to work to get this uh, posted pretty quick to give everybody at least a few days to listen to our opinion before they uh, get those previews orders in uh, with Mike. So, um, I do want to mention one thing before we, another thing, before we actually get into the, uh, uh, the actual DC connect last month on the very first page, they advertised some Fortnite books. So I was thinking that those were brand new solicits. No, those are already out. (laughs) Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And they're already on like second and third prints. Yeah. So it's crazy. It's like I was going, man, I can't find this in the catalog to actually order. That's because they had been ordered months before. So 
it was crazy. So, yeah. So if you're looking for Batman Fortnite, uh, there are going to be reprints of those books. So just kind of be forewarned. You might be able to talk to Mike. He can add a add in a, an order on a reprint. Or as we'll see later on, the, the trade the is trade. in this preview. That is correct. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So I don't know, Mike, you want to talk about uh, Superboy or, or excuse me, Superman yeah. on page one? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the first thing that, that they obviously are hearkening the uh, the Superman number one from what was a 19. When did Superman number one come out? 1939. Was it a year after Action Comics number one? But that was going to be my to, guess. I don't know. Yeah. If that's, yeah. And uh, yeah, for old time readers, that's you'll see the design is uh, intended to grab your attention like that. I think it's a cool cover and mm-hmm. I'll give it a shot. I One thing I did notice is where it says 22 pages of action. The original Superman number one is uh, 64 pages of action for a dime. <laughs> that's <laughs> so, a little different. Yeah, a little different from uh, times of times have changed. But uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. But I have to say, John Timms is not my favorite artist i I, don't, I just don't tom taylor they got me hooked with that guy yeah. on on writing but uh you know we'll either way we'll see how it goes i'll give it a shot yeah, has this, i mean go ahead has this ever happened before is this the first time that that jonathan kent has been superman oh, yeah, yeah, well except so. for future state right. issues okay. um but yeah this is uh, in in main title main yeah and in the main title and it's a it's an ongoing uh, i believe it is isn't it um it it uh, yeah so far it's an ongoing, ongoing. yeah <laughs> yeah. And tom, yeah tom taylor probably has a good a uh, series of arcs or one big arc i mean um i'd say it's going to have some lasting power but uh you know it, uh, but before this he had the super sons and mm-hmm, you know he yeah. was about eight years old and then he got aged quickly like soap opera style <laughs> uh, from eight years old to 15 or 16. And then he joined the Legion of superheroes and, you know, it's been, um, uh, almost like fast forward ever since. Mm-hmm. So the solicits are kind of like, you know, talking about how he's, you know, he, you know, all these years of being, uh, you know, we've watched him grow up and to be honest, he really didn't come back around until I want to say rebirth. Um, you know, because there was no, uh, there for a while, the, the previous iteration of Superman wasn't married to uh, the new 52 Superman. So, mm-hmm. well, this character's first appearance was in what DC convergence Superman, um, like two. <sighs> yes. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, you know, they still can't decide how old he is though. When you look at these variant covers, <laughs> they got that middle one on the left. Where he is <laughs> clearly like, you know, 10, 12 years old in that one. Uh, <laughs> So yeah. Like, yeah. How old? How old is this guy? So. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, maybe they're just leaving it open for a possible de aging sometime. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't like this art? Did you on the next page where you have uh, the art? That, it's the style that um, the Bruce Timms, uh, he and Jorge Jimenez, they John got that Jones. really super angular. I think that it, it's not bad. I just don't like the figures. I don't like the yeah. And okay. it's just a personal preference. Well, I understand. So. I, I totally get it. So, uh, all right, page four. Got Superman and the Authority. So, so Jonathan Kent gets the action title. No, he gets Superman title, and then mm-hmm. Superman's going to be Superman and the Authority. Actually, that's not even the regular title, right? That's actually another right, series. Yeah. That's a Superman will be an action. Yeah. Right. So, so this one I'm definitely folks. on. This is Grant Morrison and Mikhail Hineen. And I mean, it's just, it's only a, what, a four issue yeah. miniseries. But I'm interested to see how Superman puts together this uh, authority team. And I really didn't read much of the authority or, or any of those characters, except whenever they guest star in some other book. But I, I'm interested in how this fits into continuity, though, because he's definitely got that sort of a combination of the uh, uh the kingdom, oh, come. kingdom come superman with the new 52 short sleeve shirt superman so <laughs> and they you know they had to give him the gray hair you know yeah all right the gray temples yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know it's not your regular superman <laughs> but if you haven't read seen this mikhail hanin he actually uh, i think first time i seen him was in uh grayson when dick grayson was uh not nightwing he was just yeah. a spot yeah 
fantastic artist. Yeah, I did like that. I, I didn't realize that that was the same artist. Yeah. Is that the Tom King series? It was Tom King and okay. uh, his... Oh, shoot. He had another guy that oh, wrote Tim with Tim Seeley. Tim Seeley, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, page eight. So yeah. Static uh, is getting, uh, this is one of our, or not one of our, but one of the Milestone characters. So Static is getting mm-hmm. a new number, issue number one. I do like that they're at least advertising this as seasons, um, kind of like what they did with Naomi and, and some of the Wonder comics. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, layouts by Criss Cross, who that just sounds like a, just sounds like a hip hop artist to me. Um, <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he did uh, work on like original milestone books. Criss Cross did, right? That was a, that he's been around uh, that. He's this not one world of the names I associate with milestone, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't part of milestone. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that, uh, that I can't say one way or the other. So it's funny. I, and when I heard Criss Cross, my, I related to Christopher Cross from, Oh. Way back. <laughs> <laughs> Criss Cross makes you want to jump, jump. That's how. It goes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're rebooting uh, completely. This isn't like a, a handoff from the old series or anything. It looked like they're gonna they're gonna start this the story all over uh, for Static here with maybe a little bit of a, a middle ground between the cartoon kind of kid friendly version and the more adult oriented milestone version. It seems like on that. So I'm, I'm interested to try it out. And I always want to say static shock, not just static. Right. <laughs> that's, just, that's just how I think of this character. Yeah. Um, well, wasn't then, that the name of the original? That was the I cartoon, so. right? And okay. It was a cartoon for sure. I don't know if the, if the original book was also static okay. shock. The, uh, the original milestone book was just static. Okay. So I still think of it as this character is static shock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they are soliciting the first two issues um, you know, here. So they, this is one thing I noticed in this catalog for DC is they're soliciting stuff for June and July. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we're not going to see the second issue until July 20th. But, you know, because this should be, what is this? This is the May catalog for stuff shipping in, in June and July. But, um, yeah, so I don't know if they're just behind or th- it, it's just something feels off about this catalog with such a with two various months, you know, it's, uh, it's almost like they decided last minute and just couldn't get their act together to get this issue. Number one in the last catalog, which is where it should have been. Right. Well, I, from what I understood, the milestone, uh, was, was actually supposed to come out mo- a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so maybe they didn't, like you're saying, maybe they just finally got their stuff together. and was like, Oh, we can put it out in June. We weren't sure if we were going to be able to, but now we, we decided we can, but it's like, there's a lot of that in for, uh, for DC in this one. Yeah. And uh, Icon and Rocket season one on page mm-hmm. 10. Um, and are they doing the first two issues of that one? No, they're just listing issue one for mm-hmm. Icon and Rocket. And this is a change, too, because this title, when it first came out, was just Icon. Right. Um, okay. So, uh, but, so that's, but that's another Milestone character. And I believe Reginald Hudland was um, involved with the original Milestone um, mm-hmm. group as okay. well. So. They've redesigned his costume. Well, actually, both of their costumes. Yeah. And it, it, it really is reminiscent of the um, Earth-23 Superman, the one that's president. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, let's see. Page 12. Anybody else want to talk about The Conjuring? Yeah, we got... I, I'm not familiar with the series, The Conjuring. I, I think I've watched maybe the first movie, but uh, it's interesting that we're going into another, some sort of imprint, potentially, with the DC horror uh, it doesn't have like an imprint on there, but uh, it, from the way it sounded, they were going to have a horror imprint uh, somehow, which I thought was weird because Hill House was kind of mm-hmm. their uh, their yeah. horror thing. Or uh, yeah, I just looked at this and assumed it was black label, but it doesn't say black label. It's like, no. yeah, yeah. Um, but the the artwork, the cover art looks awesome. The Bill Bill Sinkevich. Yeah. Um, of course, this is going to tie directly into the upcoming, you know, movie whenever that comes out. I guess this is kind of like a, what is it, like a prequel or is it a, uh, I can't remember. I remember reading this, but I don't remember what it said. It's so tie in. It's kind of vague yeah. on exactly yeah. how it plays in. It's probably some like haunted object that's in the movie that this is the story behind the object. Yeah, or something. that they show like in one scene yes. for just like a split <laughs> second, you know. Yeah. 
But you've got the the screenwriters are in there, or at least one of the screenwriters is is, uh, connected to it. So probably have at least some uh, some definite tie in. Like it'll it'll be similar in the way that it feels, I guess, to the movies. And the first two issues of that are also solicited Mm -hmm. one for June and one for July. So Uh, what's next? My next thing is on page 16. So Um, let's see. I'm on page. Oh, nope, I'm on page 17, so go ahead. Okay, well, on page 16, we got the Batman Catwoman special. Um, and this is one of those things where I think, because John Paul Leon, now that is the artist that recently passed, isn't that correct? That's right. Okay, so I really, like, they talk about this having originally been part of Tom King's Batman Catwoman, and I really feel like maybe they decided to kind of pull this this I guess this story could stand on its own mm. and pull this out and release a special since he was the artist and cover artist um, on uh, on this particular issue. I, w- I would expect to even say that this was part of the Batman Catwoman series written by Tom King. So they're just kind of switching it over to a special because of who the artist is. At least that's my opinion. Anyway, I don't yeah. I mean, I don't know that fact. I think that's a good possibility. Um, so, uh, but anyway, so this is going to be tied to that, you know, the ending here of Tom King's run on Batman. Uh, so you want to be sure you pick this one up if you are, you know, if you've been reading the Tom King, ba- had been reading the Tom King uh, Batman stuff. So don't miss this one on your pull list. 19? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, this is one of those deals where the cover snagged my attention and <laughs> Batman Secret Files, The Huntress. Oh, okay. Always Back been. on 17. Oh, we oh, got yeah, that thing. Where I'm going by page numbers, and you're going by the PDF. PDF page. number, yeah. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> weird. On the, yeah, on the page itself, it says 17, but on the preview or on the this little side mm-hmm. scroller, it says 19. So I apologize. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's a a cover by Irvin Rodriguez. Looks like it's a painted cover, very real, realistic, and that's a favorite cover uh, character of mine. So and it's just a one shot, so no big investment there, but it looks like it'd be. Well worth uh, four ninety nine for forty pages. That looks pretty, pretty appealing. Nice. And she gets a new power, evidently, from what it says. Yep, new. that's right. Yeah, which <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that, but we'll see. <laughs> I uh, I'm right. I'm the next page over. Uh, the Batman Secret Files for the Signal. I feel like this isn't a char- character that's got enough of its own standalone yet. Uh, and I, you know, I knew it. The first appearance was in like the Year Zero stuff, but the only thing that's kind of been a specific the signal uh, thing was that Batman the signal uh, little three issue mini that they did uh, as far as I know. So I'm, I'm not a hundred percent on this character, but I'd like to know more before I made a, a big decision. So I like the idea that there's a little, a little one shot there for that. Yeah. All right. On printed page 19, Mike, <laughs> I know you want to talk about this one. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I mean, I, Dan Jurgens writing uh, his original creation, Booster Gold, along with Ted Cord, Blue Beetle, Ryan Sook on art. It's a an eight issue series, and you know, I, I I think a lot of people probably a lot, especially you know, nostalgia is a very strong drug, and what that's what most people feel when they see this blue and gold, blue and gold. I'm not even sure if blue and gold was a term that was used back in the day of the Justice League International, you know, the J.M.D. Mateus and Keith Giffen and Kevin McGuire. But I feel like it was. was I feel like it was part of it. Yeah. Okay, but, you know, I'm definitely in for the for the the short run that it is. And Ted Cord is one of my favorite characters, probably more so than Booster Gold. Um, But my question is, will Ryan Sook? Will he stay on for all eight issues, all eight full issues? issues. Yeah. So, so if anybody wants to put any money on that, uh, <laughs> let's see what takers we have. Yeah, uh, he's not known for for that, but <laughs> either way, it's 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 got its hooks into me. Has <laughs> Ted Cord been around yet? And was he for like even yeah. for Rebirth? I'm yeah, he's in for Rebirth. He was like the the mentor for Jaime Reyes. Yes, but then he kind of went. Did he go bad for a while? He went. Uh, not well. You know what? Where did he go? I don't. Seems like I remember a story where he was. But okay, so he was in Suicide Squad, the most recent iteration of that, okay. with Tom Taylor writing. But he wasn't really bad. He was sort of being forced uh, to play the role of a bad guy. So that's not does it. That doesn't count. But that doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> he he also was um, the last real t- real of him was with um, 
Tom King's uh, series, the, um, oh my gosh, Heroes in Crisis. Okay. So okay. there was, a, I don't know if you've read that or not, but it was, I didn't like the outcome, but it was, it was a well-written story. I, I have art, a but... cover sitting in my to read pile, so it's, yeah. I could even see it from where I'm sitting at. So. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the pretty pictures and just move on, is what I say. <laughs> Uh, anything for 22? Um, let's see. I've got uh, I've got 20. Okay. Uh, the Justice League Infinity is a, a continuation of the Justice League Unlimited uh, TV show. So if you were if you were a fan of that one, that was out in the early 2000s, I think. Um, it, it's cool just to see those characters together again, and uh, that art, just that that kind of style that is still kind of feeling from the Batman animated series kind of pulls in and you kind of see those characters in that version kind of continue on, um, that the writers from the series, a couple of the different writers. So expect the same content and same kind of stories, uh, from that. I thought that was cool that they're, they're giving those guys uh, another chance at, uh, those characters. So, yeah, I agree. Totally. Uh, page 22, you got the Batman Fortnite zero point hardcover. And uh, Shad mentioned this, you know, earlier mm -hmm. on. Um, this is actually going to include um, apparently the codes to unlock the seven DC themed Fortnite digital items, mm. which I'm sure is why a lot of people were maybe <laughs> potentially buying the individual issues. I'm making the assumption that it's going to be the same items as what you would get from buying the issues individually. I got so if you. you. So if you, so I assume if, and you know what happens when you assume <laughs> that if you missed out on the individual issues that you can pick up this hardcover and get, you know, all the, all the skins, I assume they're just skins uh, for mm. the game, but all the skins or whatever the digital items are uh, for Fortnite. So I'm not going to lie. I was, I, I read this. I read the first two issues that are out uh, cause they're on uh, DC universe. Uh, like they're just on their day and date with the physical, which I thought was kind of odd. Uh, but, uh, but I read it. And if you remove the fact that it is part of Fortnite, the story's not horrible. My bar is pretty low, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I was like, I actually, I, I was talking to a friend of mine and I, I stripped out everything that was Fortnite and I just pitched him the idea of it without talking about the game. Mm -hmm. And he was like, that sounds pretty cool. I was like, that's the Fortnite crossover. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they go into like the multiverse and perhaps the multiverse itself. Yeah. yeah. A desperate chin to save not only himself, but other familiar faces from the DCU and perhaps the multiverse itself. So yeah. this is it's kind of got a, an Earth's quality uh, story. Yeah. It's got a little bit of a, a memento like that, that uh, it's a Christian Bale movie where he's forgetting everything and he has to write all over his, his body, tattoo all over his body. It's kind of got that little bit of a vibe uh, to it where he's constantly forgetting what's going on because every time Batman gets knocked out of a round of Fortnite, he can't remember anything about it. So that wasn't Christian Bale, was it? That was um, maybe it wasn't. Uh, um, oh, gosh, I, I keep talking. I'll find <laughs> no, I'm thinking of The Machinist is Christian Bale. Yeah. But uh, it's Christian Nolan film. Yes, it was. Oh, gosh, OK, there there's the guy, Guy <laughs> Pierce. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you hear a Christopher Nolan film, you just assume that Christian Bale is in. That's it. right. That he's involved <laughs> somehow. <laughs> right. Oh, gosh. Uh, what's next? Uh, I got, I'm up uh, to 28. Yes, yeah, before me. So I'm yep. 32. So this is, I've got all daughters and all granddaughters. So anytime I see a book like this, it's, um, in, it's basically in uh, celebration of Wonder Woman's 80th, you know, uh, anniversary. And it's called Wonderful Women of the World, which is basically an anthology that celebrates noteworthy women from all around the world. So I'm not sure who the um, people will be that they're highlighting, but it's uh, it's real real world heroes yeah. from the fields of business, activism, science, pop culture, etc. So uh, it seems like, and it's one of those little six by nine books, so it'd be perfect for my uh, soon to be six year old granddaughter. So I've got oh, a wait, book for you later on. Yeah. yeah, right. I got a book for you later on to uh, okay to pick up as well. So okay. Uh, page thirty two. Yep. You've got uh, Batman Superman, and I just mentioned this because it has Etrigan in it. That's right. <laughs> so, hey, and that rhymes. Batman Superman and Etrigan. <laughs> yes. And you know, you, you know uh, that goes right with the whole rhyming demon theme. <laughs> uh, exactly. So, yeah. 
which also reminds me, I'm listening. I'm right now listening to Sandman, the Audible of Sandman. Mm-hmm. Finally got around to it, and yeah, oh, Patrick nice. makes an appearance in that as well. So, so is that an audio drama? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, I gotta get. And that. I don't see, as an aside, I don't see how anybody who isn't familiar with DC Comics could understand anything that's going on in that story. Because <laughs> I mean, they talk about Justice League International. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's like that's the you know who, who how many people you know are gonna you know know who martian manhunter is you know mm-hmm. it's just like it's crazy so yeah you kind of got to know the source material going into that right away <laughs> yeah it, it it's uh yeah it, i was surprised that they they kept the the audio drama that closely tied to yeah. this to the story so um anyway moving on <laughs> my next thing's not to 46 so I got 34. I just wanted to mention it's the Adventure Continues Season 2. Uh, this isn't going to be a digital first. I did look it up uh, after our okay. last uh, show. It, it's going to be digital at the same time that it's physical this this go around. So we'll have to keep an eye on that when the first one comes out in June. Absolutely. Uh, Mike, you got anything for 46? Um, yeah, on page 39. It's just the second issue of Checkmate by Bendis and Malieve. And, you know, this is almost torture reviewing these previews when you haven't got a chance to read the first issue <laughs> you're really looking forward to. Uh-huh. So, you know, wh- all I can say is that this, I look, um, I can't wait to see it. I talked about it last episode or last previews episode a little bit. So I do have on the very next page though, on page 40, something to say about the crime syndicate. This is a, a story also. Um, it's uh, written by Andy Schmidt. I think he wrote some green arrow a few years ago. Got a great cover by Howard Porter. And um, pencils by Kieran McCown and Brian Hitch. But this is what I was, I think at last episode on previews, I was talking about the potential with Earth 3, where the crime syndicate is, of the potential for introducing new characters. Because it's basically a world that's a mirror world, basically, where the bad guys are good and the good guys are bad. So that's what it looks like they're doing here. The Earth 3 is Luther, Savannah, which is spelled a little bit different. I don't know who Venus, Power Tower Lonar and well, I don't know who those three are, but you also have a Red Hood and a Thal Sinestro, and they're banding together to be the Legion of Justice to defend their world. So, again, this is issue. Well, this is already issue five, and I haven't read mm-hmm. issue one yet. So, yeah, uh, looks really good to me. Hmm. Thanks. You think? Um, I don't know. I'm assuming Savannah is the plant-based one. You think that's poison ivy? I guess I almost thought it was like. Um, you know, like a play on words with Dr. Savannah from oh, you know, well, Marvel, yeah. but I, I don't know. I don't know that I, I can't, I didn't really study the, uh, the cover that well to, to really yeah. try to make a, an assessment, but. And the power tower, that would be the, um, Oh, I can't remember what in DC, I mean, what the like gigant, gigant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seems yeah, like that would be giganta. Yeah. So. But yeah. What? That's the fun. That's kind of stuff I like. That's fun. Multi multiverse stuff. Mm hmm. Are you going to read Heroes Reborn from Marvel? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. Because it's, I mean, because that's basically, you know, what if Marvel characters were in the DC universe? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's... I, I kind of, I'm, I think I'm going to hold off on reading it until I get to get a chance to read some of the the backstory on Squadron Supreme. I really, I, I want to learn, I knew, I've known about them sort of, you know, peripherally, but I, I want to really get a better grasp of their history and then jump into this. Well, so. if you got about 15 hours to spare, that <laughs> yeah. 12 issue mini limited series of squadron Supreme. Yeah. It, it takes forever to get through that. It is wordy, wordy, wordy. Oh yeah. Written very by wordy. Claymont, maybe. No, Roy is Thomas? it maybe Roy Thomas? Yeah. That's I, another I, wordy. One. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing a complete read through of all star squadron and I forgot just how much he writes. I'm like, <laughs> oh, <my." laughs> how you get your money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's that's me for a couple of pages anyway. I'm still 46, so you're good on my end. Okay, so Harley Quinn number five. Why am I mentioning this book? I don't know. What do my notes say? <laughs> oh, we get a new villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, zero details. So yep. if you're maybe somebody who Keepsake likes it, is the name of the villain. I'm assuming the who the heck is Keepsake up in the corner. Oh, oh yeah. There, I totally missed that. So yeah, that's almost certainly who it is. So there you go. Uh, Hugo Strange, though, in the Batman. That's, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. yeah. I dig the groovy font. <laughs> <laughs> and fifty-two is my next thing. Uh, I've got forty-nine. 
Go for it. I got 47. Oh. Okay, go ahead. I can name that tune in. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another issue number two of a series I really want to um, read because this is also a kind of comic that I like is that it, it brings the connective tissue to what seems to me to be in this day and age with comics is there's it's just and I, mean, I guess it's a school different schools of thought on whether it's you know give creative freedoms to everybody and just write what you want to write and just do a good story but my my version or my preference is to have that continuity and some connective tissue and this kind of does that i mean you look at this headline up here how is roy harper alive well the reason they ask that is because in heroes in crisis wally west killed him you know, mm-hmm. and that's one of the frustrating parts about that story. Spoiler. Uh, and then who abducted Jade? <laughs> What's that? Spoiler. Oh, yeah. It's, it's only a three-year-old story. So <laughs> apparently it didn't last. So he got yeah, better. We'll talk, we'll talk more about he that later better. on. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> also asking who abducted, uh, abducted Jade, which is uh, Jenny Lynn Hayden. She's uh, the sort of the, she's the daughter of the original Golden Age Green Lantern. Anyway, it, she's been gone, absent from comics for probably a decade now, I bet. And it explains some of that. So, or supposedly he's going to, so that, that they're writing to me when they write that stuff. <laughs> Giving you answers. Potentially. Yes. I want answers. <laughs> uh, on 49 is uh justice league. I'm not, I don't normally read the justice league book, but uh, it's always, uh, especially when you've got an ongoing, that's, that's longer. Um, when they have a, a thing that says like this in the previews, uh, a great hopping on point for fans uh, <laughs> is, is like, oh, that, that perks my ears. Like, oh, I could I could hop on and, and see what's going on middle of the story. They're introducing the United, which seems like a uh, some sort of United. Uh, obviously, that's in the title. Um, a group of uh, different heroes from other planets in the galaxy that have formed together to have their own. Uh, you know, is it military? Is it is it some sort of army? Is it a Justice League type thing? Uh, yeah, I'm assuming unknown. it's a Justice League type thing. Yeah, yep. and uh, so that seems interesting. And and like I said, I always like an idea of being able to hop in in the middle of something and go, do I like this enough to keep going? Right. And then it gives you something to try to work on collecting after that too, because <laughs> they got 63 yeah. issues of something to try to find. <laughs> yeah, I, I like uh, it. It it. it it kind of dubs them the possibly as being the first legion of superheroes because they represent the United Planets, which has just been formed. I, I noticed at first when I seen the cover, though, Shad, mm-hmm. I, I seen the character on the right with the flames coming off its head, his head. He reminded mm-hmm. me of uh, Deathstorm, which was the crime syndicate version of Firestorm. I okay. mean, very much like that. So I thought, what is this? Another is there a crossover with the crime syndicate or whatever? Right. But, you yeah. know, who knows? But yeah, this this looks good. I that agree. was like where I led by Hawkman. Oh uh, well, one of the Thanagarians. They yeah. they all kind of have the same uniform. You know, that's just a okay. police uniform on Thanagar. Right. <laughs> Can you name yeah, any of these some, other characters? There's some familiar silhouettes. I the I, I, it kind of the one off to the the uh, left reminded me of the new Glee, Green Lantern uh, uh, woman. I can't remember her name from Far Sector. Oh, Sojourner. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just there's some, some familiar silhouettes. Where I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. is that who almost, is that? Almost, but also like a floronic man. Though it looks like little plants. You talking okay. about the one with the spikes out of the shoulders? Yeah, the shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of looks like a plant master or floronic Jason Woodrue character. But mm. then you got like up above that, it looks like a silhouette of maybe a starfire, maybe somebody from Tamaran. Yeah. And then it looks like a Iranian, almost looks like the outline of Adam Strange, somebody in, in Iranian. You think this yeah. is a, like a Martian, like a white Martian in the also on the left hand side center with the six arms? That could be. Very well could be, huh? yeah. Well we'll hmm. just have to read and find out. I guess right? so. Yeah. <laughs> and the listeners as well. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything four fifty two? Let's see. No. All right, so we got Legends of the Dark Knight issue number three, and we have a a new character. The Riddler gets a sidekick Mm -hmm. named Quiz. So this will be uh, apparently, as far as we know, the first appearance of Quiz. Um, They keep, you know, saying things are first appearances, and they've actually been introduced an issue or two before. So Mm. I guess we'll, uh, you know, we'll we'll find out between now and then if that actually holds. but this will probably at a minimum be Quiz's first cover appearance. And there's a couple of different covers with the uh, Quiz on. So, mm-hmm. 
56 is my next thing. I'm on 60, so go ahead. All right, so 56 and 59, we've got Rorschach 10 and Strange Adventures 11. So both of those Tom King series are uh, getting close to a conclusion. So um, we did cover the first six issues of Strange Adventures. So here pretty soon we'll have to be thinking about covering the last six issues of Strange Adventures. And we said we were going to talk about Rorschach and never, ever have. So (laughs) we'll have to put that on our radar for for down the road. Yeah. Okay. It's very decompressed, the Rorschach one is, I can tell you that. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I haven't even read the first issue yet. I'm, yeah, just, I'm I all read waiting to read them all at once. Yeah. So. I waited till I had five or well, probably five, and I read that many. Now, I'm, yeah, it's yeah, we'll save that. Okay. Uh, I'm on sixty. Sixty, go. Yeah. Okay, so they are definitely <laughs> jumping in with both feet <laughs> and going out of the way to to look like John Cena with this peacemaker to make this peacemaker look like John Cena of the movie. <laughs> I mean. He's way bulkier, got that big thick neck, and yeah. So, which I'm still gonna buy it. I'm still, you know, excited you got for this. Peacemaker and Crime Syndicate in one comic. That's right. Yeah. They wrote Come this on. one for you too. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They got a, <laughs> they got a, they got a little committee in there that's, you know, certain fans get special treatment. That's right. I uh, wish. Sixty-one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Did we talk about that book last month? I don't think so. Okay, I, how did I miss this? Tom King's writing it? Yeah, I only knew about it because I heard it. I, I heard about it, you know, on a podcast. And I'm like, yeah, I, how did I miss that in the previews? Because yeah. it definitely looks different and, and refreshing, uh, like a refreshing take on, on this character. And, and I love that artwork. The, the yeah. cover artwork is awesome. And if you're a first appearance collector, then you need to try to pick up that uh, first issue of this off the shelf because if mm. I assume that this sidekick here of Supergirl was it Ruthie, that would probably be her first appearance. So oh. uh, something to keep an eye out for. Yeah. Okay. All right, 65. I got 64. Uh, okay. The Dreaming Waking Hours 12 is the final issue of the series. Um, I didn't know when it was going to end, but I guess I should have just read at the bottom where it said 12 to 12. Um, that, <laughs> uh, they <laughs> probably a, added that later. That could, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess last month maybe it didn't have that. Uh, but yeah, so this is the final book, uh, of the Sandman universe right now. Uh, it seems like, so it's been, it's been a good run and I'm sure that we'll, there'll be some more Sandman down the road. But as of now, this is the closing of that chapter. All right. 65. He asked with a question mark. <laughs> All right. Wally West returns as the Flash. What do you think, Mike? <laughs> well, if they're, I mean, it's a good time to jump onto the series. I think um, if he comes back and and Barry goes away, I think that would be the right way to do it. Barry is not mentioned in this solicit at all. Yeah. I heard that hmm. Barry's going to have a different role. Where did hmm. I read that? He won't be the front and center Flash. Wally well, will. He, he's in Infinite Frontier. Or whatever it is, there's an yeah. infinite book that he's in this yeah. month that he's the focus of. Right. Um, but there's only room for one real Flash in, you know, in, in mainstream DC universe. I think it's okay to have all those other speedsters, but I mean, come on, you know, it's just it's too confusing, and not to mention the whole Wallace and Wally West. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's I think it's a good time. It's it's definitely tempting. But uh, we'll see. Okay. Seems and like I, it'll uh, it'll make a lot of people happy, at least to, to have that switch. I, I, that seems like a main complaint from a lot of Flash readers is I'm ready for Barry Allen to be gone. Let's mm-hmm. let's move on. Well, yeah, that's yeah. They, I mean, they they capitalized on the nostalgia of a certain generation when they brought him back after the success of the return of Hal Jordan. Mm-hmm. And uh, they brought back Barry Allen, and but the thing with the difference was how Jordan need that needed that redemption. He never really did go away. He was went from being Green Lantern to Parallax to the Spectre. Spectre. After he died in Final Night, he became the Spectre and did whatever he needed to do to be back in good graces. Whatever I think it takes a lot after if you wipe mm-hmm. out most of the Green Lantern Corps and <laughs> probably a few you know worlds, but. Um, Barry Allen was not as necessary, and his death in Crisis on Infinite Earths was more meaningful 
and poignant and it was it was, the memory of him was better left as a memory and uh, that's where but you know the allure of some profit overrode that <laughs> yeah but hopefully now they and besides they did a great job of creating that legacy char- character with Wally or you know or, or bringing him to the forefront and my gosh that, that guy I mean he, there was a lot more flash comics sold with Wally at the helm than uh, than Barry over the years so my only thing is I'm 98 to 100 is the only thing I have left in DC so uh, I only want to the other history of the DC Universe number five is on page 69, and um, again, it's not some. I've got the first couple of issues. I haven't started reading it, reading it yet. I think I'm gonna wait till I, I have them all to do that. But again, it's. Um, I think this might be the last issue. It's either either five or six, but um, it's John Ridley writing, so you can't really go wrong. No, I've, I've got a, for a while. I've got a, on 97. I don't know if that's. Uh, Sweet Tooth, the return, the collected edition of the, that series uh, will be coming out. And uh, as they advertise, soon to be a series on Netflix. Uh, they dropped the trailer since the last time we talked about uh, Sweet oh, Tooth. So it looked yeah. pretty cool. It looked pretty good. Uh, but yeah, if you were wanting to pick this up and you didn't get the single issues, the trade will be out. Nice. I do have something on the page, two pages before that or so. Mm. It's the, now I'm surprised Scott didn't call me out on it, but it's the, it's the uh, oversized tabloid hardcover <laughs> of Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes. Um, this was this is a treasury sized comic that uh, came out in the 70s with Mike Grell art, mm. and I've got I think I got two copies of this somehow, and they're both beat all the heck. But uh. again, there's that committee that says, you know what? Let's put this out as a reprint because we have a few Mike Atchisons out there. <laughs> <laughs> be interested yeah so it's it's a little steep but you know you can't let that get in the way of enjoyment <laughs> that's right that's all i got all right well 98 99 and 100 uh the gimmick of the month mm, mm-hmm, uh, yes. we have several different issues of dark knight's death metal um with their own little flexi single um so you can bust out your record player and uh, listen to Rise Against uh, by Broken Dreams Incorporated. Uh, Gray Days by, who is it? Anything, anything? Uh... I think you got them flipped around. The, the oh. Gray Days is the band. and Oh, okay. Band yeah. Gray Days. And the, yep. Okay. All right. And then, uh, was it Just Bad Luck? Was it, uh, I think so. That's a very stylized logo they have. Yes. So, um, anyway. Um, now, and they also say that they are limiting these to uh, 3,000, 2,000, and 2,000 for comic shops. That doesn't mean they're not going to print some for other <laughs> places. But comic shops are going to be allocated on these. So you want to get your order in early if that is something that you want. I, don't, I don't think I've even heard. I haven't heard of most of these bands or, and definitely not the songs connected yeah. to them. <laughs> I've not heard of any of them, so uh, you got to figure with it being a title death metal that that probably points to the type of music that it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think think this these would be relaxing songs. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be like Seals and Croft or anything like that, <laughs> <You> know, <is laughs> it? Uh, or Christopher Cross as you Christopher Cross <laughs> sailing. <laughs> and that would be funny if it was something like that on there. <laughs> doesn't go with my death metal comic <laughs> uh, anything else dc no i'm sir. all good all right let's go to marvel then all right all right amazing fantasy because we got to keep those trademarks alive <laughs> so we got a five issue series um and i guess if you ever wanted to know what captain america would be like as conan the barbarian uh then this is probably the series for you so it, it kind of feels like um Oh, um, Avengers Forever, where they pulled some heroes out of various points in a timeline and and brought them together. Mm-hmm. So this is they're bringing like a teenage Spider-Man and a Captain America from World War Two and the Red Room Black Widow and telling some stories where they get you know pulled out to this random island or something like that. So um, five issue series. I, I don't know if you like the alternate stories, then this would be something probably to consider. Yeah, I think I I like the I love the the original the cover on what page two or page one or whatever it is with the the big 
winged lion and and all that. There's a poster of it later on that I was like, if I was ever going to get a poster, that one's kind of wild. Uh, but <laughs> How the, are uh, the arrows stuck in his shield is what I want to know. <laughs> That's true. Good point. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was just, I was just getting ready to comment on that great cover by Simone Bianchi. And now I realize it's a, um, what is it, a one in... One in 25, or mm. it's a hidden gem variant, so it's got to be more than one in 25, actually. Oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I doubt that Mike will order enough for uh, <laughs> for us to get that, but <laughs> but uh, the Care or Care, I don't know how you say the the writer artist Andrews uh, did a, a book called Renato Jones, it was an image title a while back, and that was I really dug that kind of weird assassin uh type thing, but the artwork was really what drew me on that book. and uh, and so similar artwork to that, uh, obviously, since it's the same person. Uh, and so I'm, I'm down for it just for that artwork and uh, seeing kind of where that is taken. <laughs> yep. And it looks like Spider-Man's getting some multiple crossovers with the Sinister War, a new four issue series. Uh, we have not one, but two um, Sinister Sixes. We have the Sinister Six and the Savage Six. Mm. So it looks like Doc Ock and Vulture each form their own sinister six team and spidey gets stuck in the middle and it's like that's going to cross over amongst all of the spider-man books for um you know was it the month of july so got a you... new uh, moon knight series i don't know if that's a limited or it's on page 40 i might be a little bit too far ahead yeah you're jumping you're jumping the sorry jumping about that yeah so. <laughs> And if you don't want to read that Spider-Man story, if you're looking forward to the Venom movie coming out, you've got Extreme Carnage, yeah. because Maximum was not enough. So we've got, uh, uh, what, a, looks like a series of uh, one-shots mm-hmm. and an alpha running this month, and I assume that there'll be an Omega at some point, probably next month. Um, and then on page uh, 12, we've got a new X-Men number one, um, I guess Hickman's run on X-Men is it, in the process of wrapping up. Yeah, I uh, guess the the what was it the the ball or whatever the gala that was last yes. month uh, must be the somewhat of a finale, I guess, for his his run on X-Men. Mm-hmm. So that's uh that's so if you I've I've heard some people on the you know Mike's grand opening said that they just weren't enjoying X-Men with Hickman, so uh, which I've liked what I read. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you're looking for a different writer, then, well, now's your chance. So you can jump on with the new number one. Mm-hmm. So the question is, where will Hickman go next? I say he'll go back to indie stuff for a while would be my guess. Yeah. 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 So now we can talk some, about Moon Knight. Uh, I think Hickman had some some projects that he kind of left uh, open when he when he jumped into the X-Men universe right. so on the yeah. on the creator own side. Yeah, Moon Knight's on Moon Knight number one. It's on page forty and uh, or sixteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. No, fifteen. Oh, I'm 16, sorry, forty 17. pages. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness, it's on page sixteen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't I don't know anything about the character, but I've always thought I like the character's design, and mm-hmm. you know, this is something maybe it'd be a good, like you said, Shad, a good jumping on point. Yeah, I'm exactly with you. I've there's a years of me going, I'm going to, I'm going to read moon Knight This, this, yeah. this go around this, this yeah. start, this number one. Yeah. And, uh, I just, I've never, but I, it's always been intriguing. I like the idea of the character. So how I'm would you it. describe this character, Scott, being the Marvelite? Well, uh, some people will describe him as a Batman ripoff because mm-hmm. he's the wealthy guy who has all the gadgets and goes out at night and has the costume. Um, but, uh, they, the, the big, I guess, difference for him, differentiating factor for him now is that he has, was it disassociative identity? Um, whatever that, oh, okay. uh, yeah, it's not, what used to be referred to as multiple personality. Mm-hmm. Um, now when you go back and read the originals, like not the original, but like the, the first Moon Knight series from the, was it, I can't remember if it was late seventies or early eighties. Um, where Bill Sienkiewicz kind of, you know, got his name. I think it was a lot of it was written by Doug Monk. Um, mm. He, you know, he would talk, one personality would talk about the other personalities, which is not what you would typically expect. So I always felt that he wasn't really, you know, multiple personality. He just like, when I'm in my 
taxi cab. I am this identity. When I'm Moon Knight, I am Moon Knight. Mm. But they kind of ran with that, and then he even went pretty over the end. And I think it was a, uh, a Warren Ellis series where like he's having like conversations with the other Avengers and they're, they're asking for his help. And then you come and find out that none of the Avengers are actually there. He's just talking to imaginary people. Mm. Oh, so wow. um, it'll be interesting to see what they keep. And, you know, for this series and of course for the upcoming uh, Disney plus series, once that uh, comes out. So, mm-hmm. so who knows? <laughs> well, the art looks great. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, my next thing is not till 38. I don't have a whole lot in Marvel this time. I don't either. I'm not until 51. Okay. I mean, just Go lots ahead. of regular, regular books and, you know, continuing story, uh, what's going on. But on page 38, uh, we have Spider Woman issue number 13. And I'm only mentioning this issue because we've got Lady Bullseye in it. Um, I, I don't even know the last time that we saw Lady Bullseye. Oh, she yeah. had her first appearance in like Daredevil 111. Um, so this is a, you know, based on the price of what her first appearance sells for, this is a fairly popular character. Uh, so if you've been, uh, you know, looking for some more lady bullseye in your life, then here is your opportunity. I don't know if she was in like maybe the previous issue and this is a continuation of that story and, and hopefully she'll be in for a few issues after this. So, um, it's kind of, I think she's an interesting character. So, um, so yeah, if you need Lady Bullseye, here's a chance. And my next thing is after that's not till fifty seven. Yeah, you got I'm Mike. good. You good? Uh, good. On fifty one is Guardians of the Galaxy sixteen, which promises the last annihilation. Um, <laughs> so uh, we'll see how. I don't know how big this one will be. I know that annihilation is kind of was a, a pretty big crossover uh, event. Uh, series uh, this one coming out of Guardians of the Galaxy 16 I don't know if it's gonna there's nothing else uh, really solicited doesn't seem anywhere else that is doing it. so is this just the kickoff this month and maybe next month will be a, a larger story or what it will be but um, yeah. Annihilation's always been an interesting uh, story that I've never read but always wanted to so yeah. just thought I'd mention it yeah it's, I read, I guess, the first one. It's pretty good. Um, it's okay. kind of where Abnett and Lanning kind of, you know, kind of put their stamp on Marvel Cosmic stuff. So, mm. yeah. Um, They're a good uh, pairing, too. They they did a lot of uh, Legion of Superheroes, among other things. But Page 57. We're down to the I'm final f- three issues of Immortal Hulk. Mm. Uh, yeah. I actually, on 53, I just want to kind of this uh, latest uh, run of Thor. It's number 15. It's uh, still kind of wrapping up or it's still extending out the the Donald Blake storyline. So uh, I've read five or so issues of that. I just got some catching up to do, but it's really, really good so far. I know you're not a big Donny Cates guy, but it's I'm liking it. How is he writing? How is he writing Thor? Is he writing him like the buffoon that he's become in the Marvel Cinematic? No. Or is he like the braggart type Thor or something completely different? No, he seems a little bit more noble than what you might. I mean, he seems I. OK, I don't nothing's jumping out of me, like saying that's not his character or that he's out okay. of character. Uh, but it's mostly concentrating on the how Donald Blake was sort of, you know, given the shaft, <laughs> given the shaft. And he's yeah. it's made him crazy. And now he's kind of like the, the antagonist in it. But. Okay. Almost well, rightly I, so, though. So maybe I should. I'll give it a shot then, because yeah, um, I was I was a faithful Thor reader for a long time, and then there towards the end of his run, Jason Aaron kind of, I don't know, lost his way, and uh, yeah, maybe I need to get back on this. And I just didn't care for the, all the King and Black stuff. So maybe now that we're past that, it'd be right know, time to pick that up. So, so you were saying about Immortal Hulk number forty-eight. Yeah, three issues left. That's all I was going to say. Oh, wow. That's so it ends at 50, then. We'll be I, it is supposed to end at 50. Um, now, they're not saying this here, but it was my understanding that Al Ewing s- said that it was going to end at issue 50. So you figure they would say, you know, you know, three issues left or something like that. But they're, That's they're a good run. It wasn't like double shipped or anything like that, was it? It was no, a uh-huh. monthly book. As far as I remember, yeah. No, they had a lot of one shots tied to it. but Yeah, that's really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and believe it or not, that's everything I have in Marvel. 
I've yeah, got that covers 64 it. is the last thing I got. Okay. Uh, that's uh, a Job of the Hut uh, one shot. It looks like uh, tying into the War of the Bounty Hunters. Uh, the only thing I, I saw in here that caught my attention is that it has a a tie to the High Republic series. So the all the kind of prequel uh, pre prequel uh, stuff that they're doing in the High Republic books looks like there's going to be some somewhat of a tie in. Uh, they're dealing with a lot of hut stuff in the High Republic, so um, I'm guessing maybe maybe Jabba tells a story <laughs> that has uh, something yeah. to do with some some yeah. family members or something along those lines. Nothing too crazy, but uh, looks like he's uh, just gonna be Jabba the Hut, the the gangster boss, is kind of what they're gonna highlight in this. So yeah. Page ninety one, this Curse of the Man thing trades. It's got one of those uh, Paul Gleason covers, or Pat, excuse me, Patrick Gleason, Gleason covers. You know, he did that uh, in Amazing mm. Spider-Man 55, where it's just like the Spider-Man out of webbing. So here is something very comparable uh, yeah. with uh, Man-Thing. I don't know if that was on a regular issue or not, if that's just for that cover. Uh, that's pretty cool, though. Yeah. But, you know, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm done with Marvel. So just this, the ongoings are just ongoing, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which really is how it should do. be, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Big book. Big book. Big book. All right. So just as another reminder, uh, previous catalog, uh, you know, get a copy so you can see all the stuff we don't talk about. And orders are due as close to May 18th as you can get them. All right. I don't know. My first thing's on 42. Have at it. All right. So in image, we've got Mom, Mother of Madness. And Amelia Clark, which everybody knows from uh, Game of Thrones, is now going to uh, try to test the waters here right in a comic. Got a three-issue series. Um, I'm surprised that the main character doesn't look exactly like her. Right. Uh, <laughs> as if she was writing this for herself to be in a TV show. I don't I don't know. Um, you know, part of me is like, you know... Do you have any business writing the comic? Uh, oh, she like does that. have Marguerite Bennett co-writing, so yes. you figure she's probably doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. She maybe had, let's write a character who does this and this. Yes, yeah. Go. She was the yeah. idea person. Yeah. There you yeah. go. <laughs> so the Mother of Dragons is now writing the Mother of Madness. Oh, look at you with yeah. your... Uh, My Game you of Thrones, yeah. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> That's what I do. I drink and I know things. <laughs> <laughs> But they did give you several pages of uh, interior artwork, you know, for the book. So um, you can definitely get a feel if, for if it's something that you think you're going to like. So though, if she is a mom 24 seven, then how can she be a superhero as well is my question. Because then she had to stop being a mom to be the superhero. I don't she know. might have time traveling powers. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's it. So. <laughs> uh, uh, I got uh, the on 46 uh, Sweet Paprika. Uh, from uh, Mirka and Dolfo. Uh, she did uh, the a book, what was it called? Uh, Unnatural uh, for Image. And uh, I thought that was a really interesting story. It was kind of a, almost a Romeo and Juliet uh, kind of thing, but with animal people. Uh, and it was uh, very spicy, if you will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the artwork is uh, same uh, from her. So I really, I really dug her art style, and so I'll, I'll pick it up just based on that alone. It seems like it's a, it's a world of uh, maybe angels and demons type thing, so or horned people and winged people at least, uh, <laughs> and so they're maybe setting up, setting up something similar to Unnatural already, in that you've got two different st- type of people intermingling, but we'll see. It does they, look good. I had it they, earmarked they, as well. Sultry yeah. artistic flair. Yes. <laughs> How they describe it. <laughs> Page 50? Yeah. All right. Skybound. I don't know if this is supposed to be. I assume it's supposed to be 10. Skybound 10. Yeah. I number think so. one because of the 10th year anniversary for uh, Skybound. So they are soliciting the first five issues mm-hmm. uh, going from July 7th up till August 4th. So this is going to be weekly. weekly. Now, they don't say if this is going to be a five issue series. I would guess it's going to be 10 issues to go <laughs> along with the uh, the Skybound 10. But they don't they don't say if it's going to be ongoing or a limited series. Um, but this is 
absolutely a book you should pick up if mm-hmm. you are looking for because they're going to have some new stories here. Yeah. And you know Kirkman's luck. You know sometimes he just you know, <laughs> he'll throw something new out there and it sticks. You know between Invincible and and what's that other one? Oh yeah, Luck <laughs> Dead. Some people have heard of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's got the the first appearance in comics of Clementine from the Telltale Walking Dead series. Um, there's uh, someone. Is it is this Invincible on the cover with the lightsaber? Uh, I don't know who this is. I, yeah, I don't it know. Doesn't I look don't like either. Invincible's color scheme, but uh, there's a lightsaber involved. That's all I know, or a light sword. <laughs> it has to be. I mean, I guess it's either Ultra Mega or Manifest Destiny, because like you okay. got Walking Dead, you got a Rick Grimes 2000, you got a Clementine story, then you have an Ultra Mega Ultra Mega story and a Manifest Destiny story. So yeah. I, unless it's Rick Grimes 2000, that's what I, I hope it's Rick Grimes with the lightsaber, but I didn't want to sound stupid. <laughs> because, well, because they've got the zombies in the background. Yeah, that's yeah, true. So I, that's, that would be my guess. Cause they kind of show ultra mega for cover B and mm-hmm. then I guess cover C must be manifest destiny. Cause cover D is, is the Clementine cover. Yeah. I'm not familiar with manifest destiny, so I'm not either. Okay, but that also looks like it's a zombie story. If you look at the hands, I mean, that's another mm-hmm. Clementine. That's actually probably another Clementine cover. Yeah, I think because Manifest Destiny was like a Lewis and or a Lewis and Clark uh, yes. type story, if I remember right. Yes, yes, okay. yes. right. I haven't read it, but I remember that aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. So that almost has to be Rick Grimes. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, issue two, you got enough. You got the continuation of Rick Grimes 2000, Still Water. Um, Birthright and Everyday Hero Machine Boy, which is a new character. And then issue three, we got Rick Grimes 2000, Murder Falcon, um, Assassination, which is a um, um, uh, Kyle Starks story, hmm. and then a Science Dog. <laughs> I can't imagine Science Dog will take off, but then again, <laughs> I know. So, yeah, anyway, five issues of this. Mm-hmm. And there may be five more issues in the next previews catalog. So. All right. Our next thing is at 56. That's mine as well. Yep. All right. We'll go. Uh, Kyle Higgins is writing a book called Ard- Ordinary Gods, and the first issue is coming out with this, uh, solicited in this previews. Uh, Philip Watanabe, I think is how you pronounce his name. Felipe Watanabe is the artist. Um, and it's, I mean, I'll read the, the, the solicitation. Basically, uh, fans of the old guard and God country will enjoy this. Um, the luminary, the prodigy, the brute, the trickster, and the innovator. They're five gods from a realm beyond our own and leaders in the war of immortals. So they are trapped, are displaced, and put on another planet where they're forced into this endless cycle of death and re- re- reincarnation. So I like this idea of bringing these random, what they call gods, lowercase g, to a planet and where they have to, you know, whatever, whoever the, whoever's pulling the strings behind the curtain. Um, it looks like an interesting story. And Kyle Higgins has just got, he's just a great writer. So, yes. yeah, he, uh, he locked me in on a, when he did, there was a, a digital, uh, like Batman beyond 2.0 that he did, uh, right. like 10 years ago. I don't know when he did it. Uh, but I was like, I like this guy. I'm in for anything he does. <laughs> yes. Page 58, you got Siphon number one. So you got another number one from Image this month. It's a three-issue series. Uh, I'm not for sure even why I put this down, but uh, <laughs> I guess because it's another number one. So there you go. I, uh, I, I wasn't lot. really, I wasn't digging the 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 premise uh, that it kind of had in solicitations until the little light bulb that says uh, it's a kind of a mix between American Gods and M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable. And I was like, okay, that sold me more than the paragraph <laughs> of what it's actually about. That told me I need to try it. Uh, 61 for crossover number eight, you've got uh, Madman on the cover. Yeah, new story arc. Yeah. Uh, 62. Um, issue 13 of Firepower starts a new story arc. And, of course, the third trade is also available. It's another good series. Uh, my next thing 76. I got 71. Go. All right. Um, 
for anybody that's a fan of uh, Rick and Morty and that that kind of thing, uh, there's a, a new printing of the Scud, the D- disposable assassin, uh, which is Dan Harmon and Rob Schrab, uh, who uh, write the Rick and Morty series. This is like one of their first things that they ever did, uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, so if you've never picked it up, it's uh it's pretty good. It's a pretty good little um, comedic, uh, cartoony <laughs> adult thing going on there. I had never watched Rick and Morty until I think it was about a year ago. I was working in Ohio mm-hmm. and I was in the hotel and it was kind of late at night and I was flipping through the channels and I thought, oh, ah, yeah, I'm going to check this out. And oh, I, I bet I watched five episodes that night because <laughs> they were like back to back. Yeah. It's hilarious. I was really lukewarm on it when it first came out. And then I think I had to consume it in a collection like that where it's like, OK, I'm in. I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Uh, let's see, 76? Yeah. Uh, die issue 18, so and I still predict we're getting close to the end. I still think it's going to be a 20-issue series, so... Okay. Because it's got a 20-sided die, says the cover art. So, oh! You know, that's, <laughs> I'm just going to lean into that. All right. 92? Let's go ahead. All right, so Walking Dead issue 19, Walking Dead Deluxe issue 19... Um, I mentioned this because this is going to be the colorized version of the first appearance of Michonne. Um, so, you know, as issue is, as this book has moved past like issue one, you know, I'm sure some of the, uh, the sales numbers have declined. So um, people may kind of forget like, Oh yeah, I need to keep ordering that so I can get the first Michonne in color. Then um, that's, that's a book to, to pick up or if you just want like your own physical copy of this book and can't afford to drop the, probably 500 to a thousand bucks to pick up the, <laughs> the original first appearance. Here's your chance. Yeah. You done with image. Yeah, I am. All right. Dark horse. Anybody want to talk about the... masters of the universe? Absolutely. Go. <laughs> uh, this is the, uh, the prequel to the uh, Kevin Smith helmed uh, Netflix cartoon. That's going to be coming out. I don't think they've got a release date yet, but it sounds like, my guess June, July is when we're probably going to see it come out as a four issue, uh, a prequel, like I said, mini series. Um, I'm, I'm more than anything. I'm just excited for the, the he man, uh, Mike Magnola cover. I think that that's awesome. Uh, oh, yeah. put through that little, that little, uh, kind of setup that he always does. But I was like, Oh, that looks awesome. I'm down for that. I'm not always yeah. down for he man, but I'm, I'm always down for a Mike Magnola cover. I had not even noticed that cover. I just completely just looked over the top of it. <laughs> uh, 96, we've got a new Tales from Harrow County Fair Folk. It's going to be a four-issue series uh, from Cullen Bunn. And I mentioned this because he was a guest at SlukyCon. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, gosh, has it been three years, two years, however long mm-hmm. ago that was? Just, so yeah. uh, however many years ago. <laughs> and I think his name will come up again uh, later on. So over and over again, he's a busy guy. It seems like he's doing a lot of writing. So uh, 108. Uh, I got 98. Uh, just mentioned the in I in ya I I will say uh, child of wonder. Uh, this is coming out looks like in a volume. I don't think it hit individual uh, issues. This is uh, just a first. But I thought that artwork looked really cool. It looks like it's uh, African folklore that they're. Uh, converting into uh, comic book stories, so I thought this was a really neat uh, thing. I'm a I like to shoot bow and arrow myself, so any 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 uh, comic book that's got a bow and arrow on the cover is I'm I'm in to try at least. <laughs> you must got anything for 108? I had actually a back on 100. I was just gonna uh, tout the Sin City Volume One hardcover. Um, it's the trade paperback and deluxe hardcover, I should say, being solicited. And it's a story, Sin City, I've never read it, but um, it's one of the Frank Miller's, you know, legendary stories. Uh, again, I don't know much about it. Uh, I know a little bit, but I don't know if it's even good. But um, It's pretty good. Is it? Okay, so yeah. it seems like the type, it seems like the format I would like to probably pick up. Mm-hmm. All right, one more time, 108. Yep. <laughs> All right, so we got a Chivalry uh, hardcover from Neil Gaiman. Uh, artist is Co- uh, Colleen Duran. Uh, basically, the story is a, a elderly British widow buys the Holy Grail from a secondhand shop. So uh, 
you, you know, you know, the artwork's going to be good. You know, the story's probably, I guess you don't know, but you, you suspect the story's going to be pretty, pretty good. Uh, so when you can get this uh, complete story just in, in uh, one book, so we don't have to worry yeah. about picking up individual issues. I like it when they do this. Cause I like Neil Gaiman as a writer, but sometimes I don't have the attention span for books without <laughs> pictures. I kind of fall asleep or, uh, and start looking at shiny objects. So when they, when they do adaptations like this, I'm, I'm down for it. So is this an adaptation? Uh, yeah, yeah, this was, uh, this was, I don't know if it was a standalone or if this was in a collection of short stories that he had already. I, he's, I think it's his exact words, but it did mention the word adaptation somewhere in there. Oh, okay. I think maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't. Oh yeah. It comes this graphic novel adaption of by Colleen. Yeah. Okay. So sure enough. Yep. I missed that also. <laughs> I couldn't get past the pay pictures either, so I just kept all stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm done with Dark Horse, so unless I said something in Dark Horse. Yeah, on page 110, just a couple pages after where you were. Uh, Gru meets Tarzan. <laughs> now, come on. How can you pass that up? You got Mark Evanier. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a long time. He's, he's a, just a, a name from the industry that goes way back. Uh, protege of Jack Kirby, Kirby, and anyway, he's the writer. I, Sergio Aragonis, what's that? I was like, didn't he co-create Gru anyway? Oh, did he? I didn't know that. I I think so. Oh well, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, while you're while you're talking, I'll try to verify that. Okay, so you got Sergio Aragonis, who I knew was the artist of Gru originally, and then you got well, he's a writer, also a co-writer, and he's uh, the artist on the cover. But then Tom Yates, who was known for his a uh, lot of his Swamp Thing work. Uh, on art, but this is a mini series, four issues. It, it, it's, that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> Especially with the, and from the cover, not uh, final, it looks like the Gru is obviously in Gru form animation drawing, He's, but then Tarzan's very right. realistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hope it's as good as that. <laughs> I'm still I'm still searching for I guess I should just type in who created Gru as opposed to Mark Evan Air Gru. So okay, yeah. so it looks like it's just it looks like it's just Sergio that okay. uh, uh, yeah mm. created, written and drawn. Yeah, because he wrote the I guess he wrote the original and okay. then later was edited and co-plotted uh, by Mark Evan Air. Okay, okay, so it says Gru the Wanderer is a fantasy comedy book series written and drawn by Sergio Aragones, rewritten, co-plotted, and edited by Mark Evan Air. Yeah. Yeah, it's I don't know. I guess maybe he has a little bit. Maybe he's like 25% co-creator of Gru. Right. So. <laughs> I knew he's been with Gru. He'd been with Gru for a long time. So. Right. Right. Uh, uh, I got one more thing in Dark Horse on 121. Uh they're doing a reprint of the Halo graphic novel. I never got into that game, but I know that there's a lot of people that got into the Halo video game and uh, there's a lot of story that's tied to that, and it looks like they haven't printed this in over a decade, it says. So I wow. thought, well, if somebody's missed out on it and they've had to try to search for it in high prices on eBay or something, this is probably a good time for them to pick that yep. up. Like I said, the next time I um, I probably won't be, be buying a game-related comic until they come out with a Duke Nukem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have anything in IDW. So. I just got one book. It's called Bermuda. It's a four issue mm-hmm. series. Um, and I think the, the, the premise is obviously it's, it's as one you might suspect, it's based on the, the island in, in the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle. And um, there's a shipwrecked, uh, I don't know if it's a young woman that's uh, there. And she's, yep. you know, she's basically got to fend off all of the other creatures and humans that have been, sh- you know, caught up in the Bermuda Triangle before. So. Yeah, she's that looks 16, pretty cool. Scrappy and living on this insane and wondrous jungle island. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I thought that, that sounded pretty cool too. Yeah, that, that does. That's all I had in IDW. In fact, that's all I had for quite some time. <laughs> yeah. I don't have anything in dynamite either. No, me neither. What? Are you kidding? Yeah. There's so much to choose from. <laughs> Do you want Red Sonia? Do you want uh, Barbarella or uh, Vampirella? Variation or yeah. variant? And they produce, you know, they only have like four titles a month, but they have about <laughs> 70 books a month. I know. You know. Okay. And James Bond issue number five. There you, oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. 
Oh, I forgot about uh, Betty Page. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. Okay. Moving on. Boom. I got a few things in boom. Yeah. You got 196. Uh, I do not. Okay. Uh, Mamo is the is a five issue mini that's starting up. Uh, I really just like the drawing of the cat on the cover. I, I, if I'm being honest, that was really I, the the art uh, itself from that sass millage, millage uh, seemed really cool. I like the kind of dot stuff that's going on in there. Uh, kind of makes it have a a little bit of an aged feel to it. Uh, but I thought the cat was a cool drawing. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty good. And they give you what one, two, two additional pages of yeah. of uh, a preview in there, uh, preview art in, in the book as well. So you can definitely get a feel for it. Mm-hmm. Something you're thinking about, like uh, two hundred two Dark Blood number one. This is a six issue series um, from Boom. Um, basically, you have a uh, after a run in awakens strange new abilities, Avery's about to become more powerful than he could ever dared to dream in a country and society that never wanted him to have any power. So, uh, I don't know. Sounds pretty interesting to me. So, mm-hmm. uh, what's next? Uh, 208, um, magic or no, let's see. 206. Uh, we have Dune blood, the start of car. Uh, so I don't know if now this is, un, I, I'm going to say, unfortunately written by Brian Herbert and, and Kevin J. Anderson. Um, I don't feel like this is an, I don't know that this is an adaption of any book. So I don't know if this is an original story. Uh, they really don't say, uh, any place. I know that the two of them had written lots and lots of, uh, uh, do of Dune tie-in books. Oh, Okay. And Brian is Frank's son, correct? Son, that is correct. And right. Kevin Anderson, you said you weren't a big fan of his writing style. No, not at all. So, yeah, yeah I was used to read all the Star Wars books. And then after I read a couple of his, I just, I couldn't stomach it anymore. <laughs> so, um, is it was the uh, House of Atreides uh, series, was that based on the book House of yes. Atreides? Okay. As far as I know, that one is. That's, and this to me is, is another part of that, would be a part of that series. But I, they don't even say if this is a one shot or an ongoing, you know. Yeah, so true. I think it's one shot, um, which makes me think that it's not a um, not tied to a story unless they did a series of like short stories or something. OK, like that. So, so I don't know. But fans of Dune um, should think about picking that up. Uh, 208 yeah. Magic uh, number four. Um, and I've been ordering um, like the various blank variants for this because the blank variants are coming in different colors and you, know, you got your five made colors for Magic the Gathering, so I thought it'd be cool to, you know, have those available, you know, um, mm-hmm. so for artwork for, you know, the Magic the Gathering fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, 210, just going to mention uh, again, because it's the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers page, that July 24th, <laughs> Power Ranger at Muddy Monster <laughs> Comics. Be That's there. Right. Who's your favorite Power Ranger, guys? Oh, I only watch the original... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the the original uh, and I was always a, a Billy the Blue Ranger uh, okay. the, the nerdy, You're of that the nerdy age. guy. I don't know if Scott and I are of the age to uh, yeah have been I, into it. I am not into Power Rangers at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They the, uh, <laughs> there for the, they had like three different Power Rangers at like Saluki Con one year. Yeah, and uh, now my son was old enough or at the right age to kind of be into Power Rangers for a while. I think. Uh, Maybe there's like two guys from Dino Thunder and one guy from another one. I and I, I called him and said, hey, you know, these Power Rangers are here. Do, this, do you want me to get their autographs or anything? He said, yeah, the two from Dino Thunder. So they're like all three sitting by each other. <laughs> so I go and get the autograph from the two Dino Thunder guys. I say to the other guy, sorry, he didn't say anything about you. He just wanted Dino Thunder. <laughs> so. <laughs> not you. <laughs> yeah. You and you, but not you. You're dead to me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's it. I'm done with uh, I'm done with Boom. Yep, me too. Uh, uh, my next thing is on two thirty. Two thirty. Uh, my next thing is not till I don't know. I didn't put a page number. Okay, <laughs> I'll find it. Action Labs two thirty one. So you're first. Oh, okay. Well, uh, there's a ab- out of Abstract Studios, which is basically Terry Moore's. <laughs> I don't know. This is exclusive. 
publisher or whatever. That's but where, that's where all his books come out of now. Okay, so. so you got Serial Volume One. It's the Glass Tomb trade paperback, and uh, you know, for fans of Rachel Rising, um, this uh, character it brings back some of the characters from that. Uh, it's one of the darker. Primarily Zoe. Yeah, Zoe. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's uh, 106 pages for 15.99. And, uh, I mean, he's just known to be one of the best writer artists in the industry. I'm going to have to check that out. Have you read Rachel Rising? No, I haven't. Should I start there? Yes. Well, okay. So that was my first uh, Terry Moore story was Rachel Rising. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I read, um, after that, I read uh, Echo, which is just so-so. And then I read Older Girl, which is outstanding. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of Older Girl. And then I read Strangers in Paradise, which I also thought was just so-so. Um, but Rachel Rising is my favorite of his stuff. So okay. um, I, you know, I went, um, I was actually in Springfield and I just went, there was a comic shop there and I just went and said, hey, I want something to read. So the guy gave me uh, Rachel Rising and I went back the next day and said, give me like the next however many trades you got. Because <laughs> I devoured that thing. It was just so good. So cool. Yeah. I'll check that out. 231. This is for you, Mike. Um, All right. Talked about needing to buy books for, you know, grandchildren and such. Yeah. Uh, Princess Princeless Volume One. All right. And we've actually talked about this before. Oh, that's right. Uh, so this there, I guess they have a new release of this. So, you know, here's kind of the solicit. The king and queen locked her away in a tower uh, guarded by a dragon to wait the rescue of some handsome prince. Now Adrian has decided to take matters into her own hands. So oh, thus yeah. she's a princess who stops waiting on the prince to come rescue her. So yeah, I like that. That <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, the granddaughter would love that. So good reference or good uh, referral. Thank you. And that's a book I've mentioned like back in the early days of the podcast. It's just uh, oh yeah, they're going back to. I don't know if they are continuing on with that, but now they're reprinting the early ones. So uh, my next thing's on two forty eight. So. I'm on 248 as well. Oh, then I think we're probably going to talk about the same thing. So you go, Shad. <laughs> Talking about the Ed Gein book? Yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, the did you uh, did you hear what Eddie Gein done? Uh, which is uh, a, a a bio uh, comic about Ed Gein, who is uh, kind of uh, not a lot of people know about him. He's a serial killer who uh, is inspired uh, a lot of horror, including uh, big dogs like Psycho, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Silence of the Lambs. Um, and Eric Powell, uh, who is known for goon, goon. is, is mm-hmm. doing it. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I didn't, I've never read goon, but I just started reading hillbilly and I was like, oh, this is really good. So <laughs> I saw that artwork and I was like, that looks familiar. And, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this. I've, I've, uh, I've kind of, I don't want to say you're, you don't want everyone to say you're into serial killers, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, they're interesting, uh, the way that their mind works and their background and their history and what they go through and then the weird things that they do sometimes. So let me uh, tell you, let me tell you, well, you go ahead. No, go yeah. Ahead. I, well, I just, I, I've known about Ed Gein for years, years and years and years. Uh, so to have this adaptation, I, it would be pretty cool. I'm definitely going to pick it up. Well, next time we ever meet at the comic store, I'll tell you some of my John Wayne Gacy stories. Okay. Oh, that was right. my first my first shift at Menard was on Death Row. Oh wow. And I ended I was I worked on Death Row for several years, but yeah. my very first and working on the tier where John Wayne Gacy was. So Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yes. Uh my next thing is not till three sixty eight. I got a two eighty eight. Go right my- ahead. Okay. Uh, 288, uh, trailer park boys. I'm not familiar with them, but I know a lot of people are into the trailer park boys. Uh, and they have a comic book, get a effing comic book is what it's called. (laughs) Uh, is a, an anthology type book, uh, just with different stories that, um, sound like, it sounds like they're either comic adaptations of scenarios or are pieces from the show. And then, uh, some things that are, uh, are larger than life that they really can't create, I guess, in the show. Um, I've never seen it, but but I yeah. just thought I'd mention it. See, I've I've got a I've boycotted that that uh, that company Devils Do. Is that okay. who's putting it out? Yeah, it is Devils Do. Yeah, because there was a a series written by Bill Willingham uh, called Lark's Killer. It was fantastic, okay. and yeah. they the the company quit paying 
they just they weren't making enough money and they weren't paying their creators. Oh wow! So that series just disappeared. And yeah, I did some research on it and found out that's why. So yeah, I won't buy anything from that oh, that outfit. Yeah. Wow. I'm on 325. Well, you're before me. Which I don't know which uh, which book to talk about because they're all many of them are about uh, music, you know, musicians in <laughs> comics. You got the Rolling Stones in comics. You got the uh, the story of Janis Joplin. You got the the Beatles in comics. Bob Lar- Bob Marley in comics. Michael Jackson in comics. So anybody that's got that that sort of straddles. Um, those two, uh, those two loves or hobbies, uh, mm-hmm. I'd say this page is for you That's right. and Shad, I'm, I'm thinking of you whenever I, <laughs> I make this recommendation. 368, anybody got anything for 368? I think so. Uh, I got 356. Okay. Uh, Titan's putting out, uh, their, their second mini series on, Horizon Zero Dawn, which is a, a probably one of my favorite uh, video games from the last 20 years, uh, and it uh, it is a really rich story about way into the future, uh, and uh, the everybody's kind of gone back to a very, very uh, almost native kind of uh, feeding off the land, using the land uh kind of scenario but there's all these robots that rose up and so there's like robot deer and i could spend hours just shooting robot deer with my uh bow and arrow (laughs) on there that's really what i do uh (laughs) but the but the artwork's always been really cool and with uh this cover by peach momoko it's uh definitely pulls me in a lot so this is i'm really excited for this the first uh mini series they did uh was really good so i look forward to this one the 11th best-selling comic for August 2020. Huh. <laughs> that's a weird thing to tout. It? <laughs> well, when you're an independent, that's huge. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, the only the only companies you ever see in the top 10 are Marvel and DC, and occasionally an image book will sneak yeah. in. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that and, makes sense. Uh, yeah. So for them to be number 11 with that title is is huge. That's probably their that may be their best-selling book ever. Yeah. So wow. What page were you guys on? Oh, I've 356. got 356. Uh, yeah. I had I, I somehow missed uh, my earmark here for uh, page 343. Okay. You got um, a historical comic uh, on Anne Frank, and uh, so anybody that wants to maybe speckle their their kids uh, reading if they like comics and they, and you want to give them a little bit of history, I don't think there's many better stories than the story of Anne Frank, and uh, so. Just want to point that out to anybody that might want to buy it for their kid. Yeah. Or they want to buy it for themselves. Yeah. So. Are they allowed? Will you allow it? Are you allowed us? Oh, will we you allow it? it? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Valiant, page 368. So I think we're back to it being Ninjak instead of Ninja K. Okay. Because this title started as Ninjak and then it was Ninja K for a while. And now it looks like we're back to Ninjak with the new number one. Mm hmm. So, um, yeah. So if you, uh, need some more ninja in your life, <laughs> Valiant has a new number one for you. Uh, 374, uh, another Cullen Bun, the last book you'll ever read. So, oh, yeah. uh, this, I don't know why this is the, the artwork just it, like, draws me for some reason or another i'm not really for sure um but it's from vault and basically you have this author and like uh her books are like being uh, blamed for acts of senseless violence Mm -hmm. so she has to hire a bodyguard and just the condition that she gives for a bodyguard is that you can't read her she can't they can't read her book (laughs) so i I don't know it looks kind of interesting so yeah it did yeah and, uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll just be honest. I've said this on, uh, before. I'd like, i there's only a handful of things that Cullen Bunn has done that I've like really super enjoyed, but I'm probably going to give that a shot. Yeah. Um, um, uh, what's next? Uh, for me, it is three ninety five. I'm back in the apparel. So anything you guys got before apparel, I got three eighty one back on three sixty six. I again, missed the earmark, but it's my obligatory, um, right. promotion of the tomorrow's books. Uh, you got alter Eagle number 171 that, uh, focuses on some golden age 
uh, characters and their creators, and then back issue number 130. Um, and then what really caught my eye is it reminded me that there's a resolicitation where it says offered again, back issue number 122. I know I ordered that back in the fall. Uh, I've yet to see it. It's a, it's basically celebrating the 40th anniversary of uh, Marv Wolfman and George Perez's uh, New Teen Titans. And uh, I don't know if they just didn't get enough orders to put it out. And that's why we don't have it yet. But uh, hopefully there's more people that will order it so I can get my copy. <laughs> Uh, on uh, 381, uh, there's a, a trade called Hotel Diablo. Uh, seems like it's going to be a, a creepy hotel story. It's actually uh, put out by uh, Machine Gun Kelly, uh, who is a, a, a musician, a, a musical artist. Um, and he's co-writing this with a, a couple other folks, it looks like. Um, and it, it was on my radar because of that. But I was like, oh, I like a creepy hotel story. That that's, <laughs> seems like a perfect, a perfect place to have a... <laughs> Have it. So your I'm, creepy I, hotels and your serial killers. There's that's you right. <laughs> <laughs> You're figuring me out. Scott. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apparel. Are you guys got any more comics? Mm-mm. No, sir. All right. Well, I just had a couple of things that uh, actually. Hold on. Maybe this is my notes from last time. <laughs> actually, I may. I may be. I don't have anything in apparel. I'm done with the side of the book. Okay. Yeah. So, got anything aside too? I got a couple of things. I do too. So my first thing's on page forty. I've got twenty. Go on there. Uh, it's just weird enough that I would love for it to be on my shelf. I don't know if eighty dollars is enough for uh, <laughs> if I if I run it on my shelf that badly. But there's a jumbo action figure of the Darth Vader concept uh, with the uh, the the plastic uh, cape on there and the the uh, the lightsaber that extracts through the through the arm uh, and the the blue and black uh, color scheme on there, uh, it looks awesome. And and uh, it's it's a 12 inch figure. And uh, I was like, man, that would look really good on my Star Wars shelf of of things. But I don't know if I love it that much. We'll see. <laughs> it's not unreasonably priced. I mean, it's what? Oh, excuse me, I misread that at fifty dollars. It's eighty dollars. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything before four? Anything else before forty? No. Okay, I, this is not something I would ever buy, but I know there has to be somebody who likes Star Trek out there. And if you were somebody who likes Star Trek and you used to like your army men, now you can have those two I things together. This, yeah. <laughs> they have the original series Nano Force Army Builder set. And it's just a bunch of plastic red, yellow, and blue uh, figures. And they also have it for the next generation as well. So you can have uh, all the characters in a two-inch tall, oh, all cool. single-color plastic nano force <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool all right okay now mike i'm gonna be disappointed if you don't have one more thing left in this catalog do you have anything else <laughs> it's a lot left? of pressure, it is I, a lot got, of pressure. I do have one more thing but it's probably not what you're okay well we'll see okay <laughs> what you got i've got on page 104 it's uh oh you Ar- missed it. <laughs> archie comics josie and the pussycats jigsaw puzzle my granddaughter's name's josie so I thought that'd be a pretty cool little mm-hmm. gift for her. So, what did I? What? What's that? Back to page one hundred and one. Oh, I'm one, oh man. Now this is an offered again, so maybe you just figured since it was offered again that you wouldn't shouldn't talk oh, about the box. It. I figured you'd be all about that. Box. I've got. Oh, okay. Well, good. <laughs> all right, and you're forgetting. But, yeah, I should have maybe mentioned, it, but I've already got one. Uh, okay. I could probably get more, but yeah, that that's a Brian Boland. Artwork. Uh, I can't remember the exact issues. There was a two or three issue arc with Star of the Conqueror, obviously, but one of the more memorable covers in the original Justice League rug uh, mm-hmm. run. So it's it's like going back. I want to say one eighties, maybe. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Remember. So yeah. I'll rely on you for the issue numbers. So, yeah. but if it's not clear what we're talking about, the Star Wars Strikes short comic storage box. So. They also have a Justice League chibi one, but it's just nowhere near as cool. <laughs> yeah, and let me tell you, it's 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 kind of like getting your books, you know, graded and 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 uh, slabbed and stuff. It's once you do this once, it's like you're compelled to continue to buy these nice boxes. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, especially if there's a theme to it, like for your Superman books or your mm-hmm. your X Men books, you want to get a you know the right <laughs> box for it. 
Uh, they got me figured out. <laughs> <laughs> I think they have us all figured out. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. You guys got anything else? I've got one more thing uh, uh, on 97. Uh, there's some some Jim Henson enamel pins I thought looked pretty cool. The They've got a the specifically the Dark Crystal enamel pin set. Uh, is uh, looks pretty cool. You get a, a dark crystal, and then you get a Skeksis, and then you get uh, what are they called? Oh gosh, uh, Erkskeks. Uh, so you get you get a, a good, a bad, and the crystal uh, in there. But then they also have <laughs> some uh, labyrinth pins and some Fraggle Rock pins that are pretty cool. Um, and then on the same page, I know it's a resolicit, but who doesn't want a David Hasselhoff Chia pet? So <laughs> I did see that. <laughs> believe it or not, God. Uh, I, I've only Chia. done one Chia pet and it, it died. I don't even know how they keep them alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's see. What are we going to go with first? Or what we're looking forward to or our investment pick? I don't know. What's everybody got? You Chad, always have you to got? let me do investment pick first because. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, Mike, what is your investment pick? Well, it will most certainly without a doubt be Batman urban legends number five, because there's a new villain alert. I think his <laughs> name is cheer. Yeah. 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 So, anyway, don't know anything about him except he's in the red hood story and this is an anthology book. So, you know, it's a lot of fun to read these, uh, you know, multi-story uh, multi-character books, but yeah, I, I think that'd be the investment book for me because I'm not getting the entire series. Uh, like I am truth and justice. The other, uh, uh, anthology series DC's putting out. Which which one was that? Batman what? Batman Urban Legends on page 36. 36. Okay, I missed that. I'm my, type write that down. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to hold it hold you hold it against you if it doesn't come worth <laughs> thousands of dollars. Oh, okay. Good luck. <laughs> Shad, what do you got? Uh the one I had kind of had flagged and you had already mentioned it uh previously is the Skybound 10 issue 1 2 3 4 5 yeah uh, all any of them uh, <laughs> are are going to be uh definitely something to watch out for. Uh I wasn't even thinking about the fact that there's new characters introduced. I just figured he was going to do something wild in there that that uh was going to spark some some sort of excitement, but definitely with new characters involved in there. Yeah, I'm right there with you on that one. I mean, you, I feel like, you know, if you if you are the type who buys comics as an investment, then if you're not buying those five, you're yeah. and I think really probably the big one to me is number issue number two, because that's one where they specifically say is like the first one where there's a new a new sto- a new mm. character. You know, the, yeah. the first issue is is all derivative of other works. But I think the, the second issue for sure um, is the is is the big one. Mm-hmm. Um and then retroactively, I think I'll go ahead and mention that Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow issue one yeah. that we didn't talk about last month. <laughs> yeah, I got to write that down. I'd, yeah. I'd, I want to not even just for investment purposes, but that one just looks like it'll be pretty good. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, I guess if Tom King can has a, have a solid premise on that, then I think it'll be a good story. So. Mm-hmm. All right, yep. Mike, what book are you most looking forward to reading? Out of this I book? bet you thought I was going to say Blue and Gold, <laughs> but <laughs> and no, I'm, I'm going correct. I have to, yeah, but I uh, curveball you. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm looking forward to Superman and the Authority. I mean, this has got wow. a great writer, great artist, and it's also. I like any kind of issue that's where you're building a new team. So uh, I think this will be a lot of fun, and I don't think you can go wrong. And even if you do go wrong, it's only four issues. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Chad, what about you? I'm going to go for uh, that Horizon Zero Dawn Liberation uh, issue one. I'm definitely looking forward to a, that new miniseries from there. Yeah, now for once it's me that's struggling. I don't know what uh, what to say that I'm looking forward to uh, <laughs> reading this time. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm torn on that Amazing Fantasy 15. It's like, do I want to read, you know, Savage Sword of Captain America? I, I have to make that decision. <laughs> And I, I just I just can't quite convince myself that that's where I need to go with that. So, uh, so I guess for me it's probably just going to be kind of the you know the, the some of the same ones that I'm like Die 18 and Firepower 13. Yeah. Are probably the ones that I'm probably most looking forward to out of the ones that we've talked about. Well, so. I know you're going to buy Die issue 20. You know I'm going to buy Die issue 20. I'm going to buy. I got them all. You know I'm buying all the covers right. too. Well, right. I'm not some of the ridiculous, you know you know only 200 printed because yeah but right. i'm trying to get as many of the die uh, covers as i can so yeah yeah so. 
All right. Well, Mike, where in your impressive, so impressive social empire, social media empire, can people reach out to you? Well, there's a multitude of places, but I'll just <laughs> name one. Uh, <laughs> on Twitter, you can find me at, at Mike Atchison five. <laughs> Shad, what about uh, you? You can find me on Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff at Shad Schubert. That's S. H A A D. I forgot how to spell my name for a second. S H A A D S C H U B E R T. And uh, the Can't Get Rights. My band has a bunch of shows coming up. So check oh. us out on Facebook uh, at facebook.com slash can't get rights. And this is Scott Reed. You can find me at Berg at comics.com, B U R G comics.com. And it has links to all the appropriate places for social media and, and, and such. And then don't forget that July 24th, mm-hmm. we're going to have the first Muddy Monster. Uh, I don't know what the official name is. It's going to be Muddy Monster Mini Con or Muddy Monster Comics Mini Con or who knows. So um, whatever it ends up being named uh with uh you know several guests and the power ranger and uh what was his name jason font i think is i'm hoping i'm pronouncing his name correctly um who was the red ranger in um oh die not i now i've got dino thunder on the brain <laughs> and i can't uh time force time force um so he will be there signing autographs so please uh, make plans to stop by on uh, yeah. July 24th and we will hopefully talk to you then. play button and record button at the same time? I do not. Thank goodness, it's all one button. So, oh man, I remember on Sundays trying to record songs off the Casey Kasem's Top 40 and on my <laughs> cassette stereo. <laughs> uh, I, I, I did it when I, I had a friend who would, you know, he'd make copies of cassette tapes. And like, he would play the tape and like, the, the it would be, I guess together would be longer than one side of a blank tape. And instead of stopping at the end of the song and flipping the tape over, he would just, yeah. so you had this gap in the middle of the song <laughs> because the tape had to flip sides and you're like, why didn't you stop it and start over? Gosh. Oh, boy. Did you see my cat attack me? Yes, I did. Out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't normally do that. She just decided she was going to go all the way up. She didn't have any claws, so I don't know how she even did that. <laughs> they find a way. Yeah. They find a way.